bum, 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 bum in the night. Travis Wayne Goodsell. Uh, I've seen a uh, commercial with uh, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer and, and Fresh Freddy Prince Jr. And I thought, when did they get together? And I never occurred to me until I saw the movie Scooby-Doo the other day. And so, yeah, Bump in the Night, awesome song. <coughs> so I decided I'm going to try a new uh, type of video uh, variation instead of watching uh, another episode of Rizzoli and Isles. So you owe me. <coughs> Especially if I continue to trigger Mormons. <coughs> uh, I'm going to go over prophecies uh, from Scripture. I'm going to start with the Book of Mormon, starting with 1 Nephi chapter 1, verse 1. And uh, just do segments on each section of uh, the text. And we'll see how that goes. <coughs> Alright, so we begin. I, Nephi. And uh, Nephi is a trigger word. Uh, because Nephi is used a lot throughout the Book of Mormon. It's also the name of the person. <coughs> I'm going to have problems. I'm going to... Uh, stupid smog. Pollution. But, uh... He's the name of the guy who meets Jesus Christ who doesn't stay for the Nephite millennium and instead hands off the keys to Nephi and takes off, leaving Nephi in charge. And what we have here in the beginning, which will not be covered in this video because he's doing an abridgment of his father's record first before he gets to his record. <clears throat> and, uh, and so what he does is the same type of thing. Uh, he becomes the leader of the tribe uh, by revelation from God, passed on from the father, Lehi, and, uh, <coughs> and then has an exodus event. Uh, it's not too dissimilar from uh, the destruction at the end before meeting Jesus in 3 Nephi 11, because they weren't in Bountiful, they just ended up in Bountiful, after the darkness and the destruction and the chaos that ensued. Uh, Nephi was in Zarahemla, where Samuel the Lamanite was, so when Jesus says, where's the record of Samuel the Lamanite, he goes, oh yeah, I'll get right on that. And so, uh, records also play a part that's another trigger, is record keeping. But uh, uh, those are the kinds of things you need to look for when you're studying and researching the Book of Mormon, and uh, with an understanding that it's for us in the latter days. It's the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. <clears throat> latter Days isn't just a time period, and then it'll just pass and millennium will just naturally occur and everything will be fine. No. There's lots of destructions, chaos, death, mayhem, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria, ghostbusters. And so it, it becomes necessary for us to read the Book of Mormon in the latter day eye, or latter day goggles beer goggles. And so, uh, pay attention to Nephi throughout the book. <coughs> uh, it's 
So here we have I, Nephi, having been born of goodly parents. So he's a mortal man. This is also another feature throughout the book. There are no uh, resurrected spirits who rule any group of people in the Book of Mormon. There are dreams and visions and, and uh, appearances by angelic beings, but never do they control other people in government or religion. They're always giving messages as angels or Malachi, Malachim uh, do. <coughs> Messengers. And so, therefore, I was taught somewhat in all the learning of my father. So he's setting up his father here. And having seen many afflictions in the course of my days, nevertheless having been highly favored of the Lord in all my days, yea, having had a great knowledge of the goodness and the mysteries of God. Trigger word, or trigger phrase, mysteries of God. Now, I've grown up where people said, where's temple? in the Book of Mormon. There is no temple. It's supposed to be the fullness of the gospel and there's no temple in the Book of Mormon. There it is. Right there. You just missed it. That's the trigger. Mysteries are not secrets. Mysteries come from the Greek word mysterion, which means initiate. So when you're being initiated into something, <coughs> like our initiatories, in the temple, that's what it's referring to, of God, who is God. Well, he's the his priesthood is the Melchizedek priesthood, after the order of the Son of God. So, mysteries, Melchizedek, uh, and that also ties into Nephi and other tribal leaders and government and religious leaders, theocratic leaders, is mysteries of God, Melchizedek. Melchizedek is Melech, King, Zadok, High Priest. King and High Priest. Melchizedek. When you are washed, you become a High Priest. When you are anointed, you become a King, a Melchizedek. Thus receiving the Melchizedek Priesthood after the order of the Son of God, which is Amen, Son Amen. It's in the Doctrine and Covenants. So, the Doctrine and Covenants is also essential in your study of the Book of Mormon. Alma also talks about this, of the Melchizedek Priesthood. And so, yes, Amen. Where do we get Amen from? Emmanuel is Isaiah. We have Isaiah in the Book of Mormon. That comes from the Egyptian. Why Egyptian? Why Paleo-Hebrew? Well, because, yea, I make a record in the language of my father, which consists of the learning of the Jews, Paleo-Hebrew, and the language of the Egyptians. Book of Mormon talks about two languages, Paleo-Hebrew and Egyptian. They don't say Paleo-Hebrew, but pre-Babylon is Paleo-Hebrew. Post-Babylon is Semitic Hebrew. Completely different language. The Jews were a separate community in Ur when they were in captivity in Babylon. Yet somehow they got immersed into the full culture of Babylon. They adopted their language, they adopted their calendar system, uh, the ritual performances, and so on and so forth. <coughs> and so the book of Daniel was not written in, uh, in Babylon. It was a Greek period, probably even Roman period, document. And so he's using Babylon to inform either the Greek Jews or the Roman Jews 
don't assimilate to the Greeks or the Romans, whichever time period it was written in. Uh, even though they were already assimilated into Babylon. <coughs> Another thing that you need to understand is that the Rosetta Stone came out, was published to the world in 1822. Uh, this was a stone <coughs> this was a stone uh, containing Egyptian hieroglyphs Egyptian uh, demotic and Koine Greek and so it technically is the learning of the Greeks in the language of the Egyptians and so the Greek language, which is alphabetical, the Egyptian language, which is not alphabetical, conformed to the Greek. Greek imposed their phonetics onto the Egyptian. And so when we see learning of the Jews for Hebrew and the language of the Egyptians, we see instead a Hebrew translation of Egyptian and that requires that you study Paleo-Hebrew and Egyptian to have a better understanding of a lot of what's being talked about here such as Amun the God of whom we are supposed to be worshiping and of whom is mentioned right here in the beginning the mysteries of Melchizedek, which is shortened in Paleo-Hebrew as Amun, the sun symbol <coughs> for the sun god, the uh, M, I can't, I'm not going to, the M symbol, which is from the Egyptian uh, uh, priest symbol, for high priest, uh, for the washing, and then uh, the N uh, is at the end, and as I've deciphered, uh, it's a determinative. Uh, and in this case, because it's a person, or deity in this case, uh, which can be the person if he's the mortal on earth who becomes Melchizedek, and gets the Melchizedek priesthood, he is therefore a king. If it's a land, uh, it's kingdom. And so in this case, it's king. So the king and high priest of Amun, the sun god, Amun. <coughs> and so he goes, I know this record is true. So then he gets into verse 4. And here we have, uh, I think this is going to be it we're at 15 minutes so just three verses and we're done with segment number one uh, so maybe I'll watch uh, some Rizzolian Isles after all and, and then we'll see tomorrow how this video did uh, but uh, that's what you're looking for when you're doing study and research and for those of you who are ex-Mormon, and for those of you who are anti-Mormon, yes, I know all about the plagiarism, I know all about the, the uh, controversies, but I've been trying to instruct everybody that there's coding. And instead of going over the coding with you, I'm trying a different tactic of people who don't know Paleo-Hebrew, don't know Egyptian, uh, and... Uh, it's a step process, which technically there's no time left for step processes, <laughs> but uh, nobody knows where to go, so I'm doing a step process anyway. So yes, keywords. Look for the keywords as you go through, because uh, there are patterns that repeat itself in the Book of Mormon, and so Nephi mysteries of God uh, and uh, 
he doesn't talk about making it on plates yet, but he does make it on plates. And so what you have is a Knights Templar reference here. Uh, and so again, I'm not going to get into Joseph Smith history and background into that, into making the Book of Mormon. Let's see. Now, if Mormons are going to be offended and triggered by this knowledge, then you're going to miss the whole point of the Book of Mormon, and you're not going to be prepared for the coming of the Mormon Christ, as we are in the final stage of coronavirus, of which Moses was a part of, which is involved here in the Book of Mormon as they reference him. So, yes, Moses is a type and shadow of the latter days, which is why I was going to do it for all the scriptures Old Testament, New Testament, Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, Joseph Smith history, and uh, have different playlists for each one. Uh, and so, uh, yes, pay very close attention because there's lots of symbolism and background information that is necessary, and I'm intending to help you through this. And so, that this is an intro, shall we say.